next is um, for example if you want to get another uh, some more statistics for example if you want to have uh, details on uh, cardinality as uh, estimated rows and uh, and actual rows by the way uh, can, uh, someone would like to help me like what exactly is cardinality anyone yeah go ahead guys someone has to answer this yes please else i need to answer them Somnath? Uh, cardinality is the number of rows out of all the rows. Like which yes. your number of rows you are selecting. Uh -huh. Okay. That's a good attempt actually. Yes. That's absolutely correct. It's basically the number of rows that the optimizer guesses will be processed for the uh, for a plan step, right? So yeah. yes, that's right. So. What do you mean by high cardinality and low cardinality? Uh, high cardinality means the probability of picking the index is high, and if it is low, then probability is very low uh, of picking the probability index. of picking an index is high. Yeah. No, that's not. I'm sorry, but that's not the correct answer. OK, talking about the high cardinality it basically refers to columns with values that are very uh, common or unique. Right, high cardinality column values are what? Uh, typically, what are they? Like ID numbers, right? Email addresses, or in fact, sometimes usernames. So high cardinality will be, for example, uh, if you have any table called as test table, right, with a column test ID. So test ID, this column would contain a unique values, right? So this is a high cardinality column, right? If you talk about the low cardinality, so uh, values like Boolean values, right, or gender, countries. Or maybe flags; th those are very common, uh, you know, um, uh, common low cardinality column examples where we have very few unique values, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay, I, I will probably add one line here. So, sure. uh, what Prashant said that high cardinality means high number of unique values, and if it's a low cardinality, then it's a less number of unique values. So yes, typically gender is a very good because there can be two or at most three genders. Right. So that's a that's a low cardinality, but employee ID will be a high cardinality because every single um, employee ID will be unique. Now Somnath said that high cardinality picks up the index. So uh, probably Was that there's a- or Anup? Anup, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, Anup I'm making a mistake. Yeah. Sorry, Anup said that I currently will pick up the index, which in a roundabout way is correct. Also, although that yeah, I mean to question. say, uh, I mean to say the when the cardinality is high, the selectivity will all, also get high. Then in that case, the select uh, the probability of picking the index will be high. Yes, yes, uh, I agree. Well, talking when you have you know touched this topic of selectivity, well. Selectivity what is selectivity is basically uh, what uh, denotes a fraction or a percentage of the data or rows that is returned or accessed by any operation like select or update, right? So selectivity is what it basically number of uh, total number of rows returned when you divide it with the total number of rows that gives you selectivity, right? Of course, that's a very important aspect or um, a metric that is considered by the optimizer while creating the execution plan. Right, so cardinality and selectivity. Yes, those are, these are the core factors which influences CBO to prepare a good or a better plan. Right, so if it's a low cardinality table, then you have a you know a totally different execution plan. And if you have a high cardinality uh, um, uh, value on a column, then of course it, you'll get a you know a good good plan. Okay, coming back uh, to this slide. So. For example, if you want to check the cardinality estimation information within your execution plan, so what you can do, you have to use IO stats and an additional argument with dbms underscore explan dot display function, right? So you have to pass IO stat and it will provide you information or like uh, uh, buffers and reads. So IO stats will give you information on buffers and read like. Uh, how many buffer scans it actually, you know, it, it use or, or during this specific operation and how many reads or disk IO has happened during this specific step. Now, if you do 
uh, this this entire thing this will also bring e rows and a rows as well that is the estimated rows and actual rows estimated i mean for this full table scan table name is t right it estimated 1000 rows but actually this table has got 2000 rows right so this is an incorrect estimation right so there is some problem right so maybe what happened uh, the statistics are not updated right so that's why it's still considering like the total rows for this table t within this table t is 1000 right but in real or in actual it has 2000 rows are you getting me so same instead of generating this e row and a row specific information you can also use gather underscore plan underscore statistics that's how gather underscore plan underscore statistics is one of the hint that you can use with your sql where you want to generate the execution plan and want to get this e row and a row or cardinality specific information for example if you see here on id or this id step three table access full right so it has got it has estimated rows five three six two nine but in actual or in real it has got only 27 rows because so uh, why is that by the way are in the many idea why in what particular scenario we have actual row and e row value difference or a gap in these two numbers are in them this is a piece uh, pruning is called pruning. No, 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 no. Uh, someone has to answer this question. Uh, Prashant, just give everybody a chance to answer yeah, this. Sure. Good question. Hey, actually, Prashant, this uh, gather stat is not generated, right? That's why it is defined is coming, right? No, no, statistics are there. I'm not talking about the state, their condition, if they are stale, outdated, missing or locked, whatever. I'm not talking about the state, but yeah, statistics are there. Yeah, the statistics is the old statistics, right? That's why it is happening, right? OK, yes, you are close, you are near. Yes, that's right. So in what particular scenario you think like this difference between E rows and A rows can happen in in actual in real? We have only 27 rows, but what it estimated for this full table scan on T1 table is five, three, six, two, nine. So what what have happened? It could be a case like someone actually uh, deleted, uh, you know, uh, a huge amount of data from the table. Now only mm -hmm. 27 rows are there, but in real after you the stats were collected, a massive delete operation happened on this table T1. And now because statistics are still there, but with the older information, right? OK, yes, yes. So that's yeah. why we are seeing five, three, six, two, nine as the estimated rows. But in real, if you go and do the select count, you will get 27 only. And that's where and that's the reason, you know, you'll get an expensive plan and you, you know, and you'll get a suboptimal plan and the, and the performance or the behavior of the SQL is not up to the mark because statistics are not there or are not fresh basically yeah uh, yeah so so i think sujit was close to the answer yes in the close, sense yes. that that mm, if you give, get this type of mismatch between the estimated rows and actual rows you can for sure think that the statistics has not been updated because the oracle optimizer now uh, thinks estimates that you have 53 or 1000 rows Yes. While in reality you have only 27. 27. So this is this is a classic case of where the latest stats has to be there because this is the kind of stupid plans that will come up if you do not have and the latest stats, especially after you have done a delete or modified the table in some way. So this is one point I had to impress. Go ahead, Prashant. Thank you. Good point. Question, but, this, but yeah, yeah. one thing, but uh, I didn't get any kind of uh, execution plan like heroes, heroes like that. As I told you, you have to generate your execution plan in advanced format, right? Or otherwise you have to use hint called as gather underscore plan underscore statistics because the plan, what you're seeing maybe in front of your screen right now, I mean, you know, in your own system is a basic plan, right? Basic plan looks like this, right? You only got name, row, yes. byte, cost, time information yes, right yes, but yes. you have to generate the execution plan in a advanced format maybe like this or even if you go and pass ios that it will also provide information about the estimation or the cardinality estimations as well along with the buffers and read information right 
Okay. Next slide. Uh, Pushan, sir, Pushan, sir, one more question. Pushan, suppose that my table is uh, 23 terabyte. Okay. I am not generated any uh, statistics, gather statistics. Okay. So uh, in that case, because uh, it may be a performance issue, that's why. On that case, if I write this select comment with the gather plan statistics, it may impact our uh, the performance also. Well, that's a very good question, actually, Sujit. I must say, yes, that's a very valid question because in order to use this specific hint, you have to execute the query, right? And of course, you're not going to use this hint in case of uh, DMLs, right? But even if you if you use this gather plan statistics with DQL like select operation, of course, if the table size is huge and you are actually doing a full table scan on it, ultimately this will execute and it will wait for some time before it presents the output at the, of the execution plan in front of you, right? So the best way you can use the ex advanced execution plan, right? Ex with advanced execution plan, you need not to run or execute the query, right? Like this, if you pass your, uh, I mean, if you do an explain plan and then do a select and then, you know, execute this SQL with advanced or maybe with the IO stats, you will get this information as well, right? So this is a good option when you know the uh, when it's not an expensive operation it hardly take few ms but you want to reduce it to one or two ms maybe or in, into centiseconds right so maybe in that case you want to execute the select with this specific hint yeah prashant one point maybe you want to explain this to sujit and others so then yeah. this uh, this thing is a two step process the first part uh, you have to first explain plan for the SQL statement. You will get a message explained and then do the select star from table. So hmm. you might want to explain that part a little. Uh, which one? Yeah. I didn't, didn't get you. I didn't get you. So oh, you talked about explain plan, right? Right. So if you use explain plan for and uh -huh. then use the SQL statement, then you use select star from table dbms explain dot display. So I yeah, don't yeah, see yeah. that part of the command. Ah, OK, yes, yeah, that's right. Yes, of course. I'm so sorry. I missed that part. I ideally that that part should be here uh, in this in this specific uh, PPT or yes, that's right. For example, if you want to generate the execution plan for any specific SQL statement, you have to use explain plan for and then followed by the uh, by that specific statement or SQL statement, select, delete, update, whatever, right? So once you pass explain plan for and then your statement, it it will come out says explained means temporary it has created the information for you so next step should be you need to query the plan table using dbms underscore explain explain dot display function right and it's up to you if you want to get typical simple or advanced uh, version of your execution plan okay so so just to sum up what prashant said uh, so, Jit, so this is a two-step process. If you don't want the query to run, because as you said, if it's a 20, 25 terabyte table, you cannot even risk running the query. So, so gather underscore plan underscore statistics is out of the equation. We will not do that. So what can we do? So we can do a two-step process. First step is, let us say the uh, uh, SQL query is select star from employee. So what I will do is explain plan for select star from employee and the output will be explained. Only thing you will get is a message explained. Then you have to run the second part of the query is select star from table, dbms underscore explain dot display, then my plan table and whatever. So it fetches from the cursor the latest uh, plan and then displays it on the table. So that two-step process you have to Google and see a little bit. So you have okay. to... Okay. Uh, Take a okay, two step. It, but it will not impact uh, in my uh, no, performance, no. right? No, 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 no. Because okay. it's not running it. Exactly. And same you can get from auto trace as well, right? Same information if you set it explain only, so it will it will own it will not execute the query for you with auto trace. It will only present the execution plan using. I'm talking about the auto trace option. But yeah, I all I mean I'm a big fan of this. You know DBMS underscore explain and display function. So this is the easiest way how you can do it. Um, do explain plan for and then the SQL. It will come out quickly saying explained. I mean it's done. So it's temporarily hold that information within the plan table and what 
next you can do you need to just query dbms underscore expand dot display i mean that's how 